It's the Mythwits, a geek pop culture web series. Broadcast live for video and audio podcasts. Watch us live at MythWits.com and find us on YouTube and iTunes. Bringing you news and reviews about geek pop culture. We have comedy skits, play nerdtastic games, and provide extensive on-location con coverage. And now, your hosts. Not safe for work, blah, blah, blah. We say bad words. If you don't like bad words, turn it off Fuck now. you. Yeah, fuck <laughs> off, right? <laughs> so anyway. Hey, that's our new one. That's our new one. <laughs> we say bad you words. Like bad words, fuck you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and don't tell your mom on us. Right. Okay, so anyway. Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Bryant, your host of The Myth Wits. This is episode 14, and this is April 7th, 2014. Tonight, I am joined by Michael Kafis. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm ha, kidding. Ha, 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 you I'm kidding. kidding. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian O'Fara. That was a douche move, dude. <laughs> no, no, that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny, but... <laughs> I'm not, I better not see a picture of you on Facebook with a shiner the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and Adrian Perez. Well, what's up? What's up? And tonight we are joined by a uh, writer and uh, get, can I call you a game designer? Sure. Game designer Mark Mark Edwards. Brilliant genius would work too. Yes, yes, brilliant genius. I like that. Evil genius? Um, so we had we had a couple of tech issues here. So if, if you're watching now, the the show's running a little bit late. Hey, shocker, tech issues. Um, so we're we're trying to we're trying to fix some of this stuff, but I keep running into uh, keep running into like all these errors. I'm gonna get everything working at some point. Uh, every time I turn around, it's a new problem. This is a brand new problem. This is something different uh, than we've had before, of course. So it's that's always fun. A smooth show would be our show jumping the shark. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think that's part of the comedy of the show, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, did anybody do anything crazy this week? Anything interesting? Anything fun? Or uh... Okay, so. I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I had a bachelor's weekend. My wife was in Atlantic City with some coworker girlfriends of hers, and I just bachelorated in it, and I bought a new toy uh, you can't really see in the background too well, but the uh, the ape it, um, is playing with it. If I'm in my big picture, but anyway, the ape is yeah, playing you're, with you're it. Yeah, you're in the you are DJ. in the big picture, but I can only see from your top lip up. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the ape over there is playing with it, but anyway, um, it's a DJ MIDI controller, and I've been like, no, Mike, you know, I'm serious. I can only see from your top lip up. What? There you it's go. Beats. You need to be up there or move your camera down a little bit. Oh, yes, right. It's right here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me do that. Ah, that's better. Okay. So, <laughs> that's a little better. Okay. Oh, you just got rid of me. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. No, I kept oh. you in there. All right. So, anyway, uh, well, then, look, hey, since we're running late, let's just jump into this. Mark Edwards is a, is a writer. He's done some game writing and game. Have you done game design? Have you designed rules and such? No, no. I'm definitely not a game design. I, I don't understand any uh, mechanics, mathematics. I was told there would be no math here. Okay. So so Mark is a writer is what he is, and he's written yes. for several RPGs. Um, I've met, I met Mark at Total Con a number of years ago, and uh, I was very impressed by the stuff he was doing. Um, so I, I knew when we got this show rolling, we'd have to have him on here at some point. Um, he does... Uh, so, so- Huh? So that fifty bucks I gave you, I didn't need to give you. No, no, no don't talk about. No. Oh, oh, the, that's, yeah, that's so part free. of it. Right, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, so so Mark he gave you fifty dollars for free. So Mark, Mark's done. Um, he did a lot of stuff with Seven C, which is one of my favorite systems of all time. I really like Seven uh, oh, yeah. C a lot. I remember that game. Yeah, that, that was a, a, a game. It's fucking fun. Um, but you've also done. You know, I, I didn't realize you had done quite a few other things. Um. Uh, so anyway, so you got your start in FanPro. What what is FanPro? FanPro was the the uh, with the predecessor to uh, Catalyst Game Labs, uh, right. the Shadow Run guys. Right. Uh, I think as I only worked for them for I think nine days. Um, <laughs> well, it was an I, illustrious I, career. Career. <laughs> oh yeah. FanPro was... crashed and burned, and all of the people who were at FanPro were then hired by Catalyst. Okay. Exact same jobs. Okay. 
Uh, and so, and, and what did you do? What did you, what did you, so you worked on um, Shadowrun stuff for them? Oh, yeah, yeah. M- many, many of their books with a, a dozen or so. At right. Least. So how was your experience working on Shadowrun? Um, initially, great. I, I like I liked the system. Um, I'd never read, uh, actually never read or played anything cyberpunk related before the very first game of Shadowrun that I played. Right. Um, uh, I got a question. Why are they running from shadows, and why is it shadow run? Oh boy! <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> I I was just the basic, uh, the basic uh, run of the mill writer, so they didn't give me any of the secrets. That's why you were there for nine days. That's, I get it. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> this this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's in the shadows, white <laughs> shadow. <laughs> oh God! I can still see you. So, um. All right, so so you worked on Shadowrun for a while, and that, and that was that was for a bit. Like, how was that? A couple of years that you did that? Because it yeah. looks like you did a lot of stuff with them. Yeah, about three, maybe four years. Okay. Um, so yeah, I did a lot of stuff with their uh, with their various um, Shadowrun missions, their their living campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually how I got my start. Was I played just to, just a game to try you know how you you go to the big cons and you go you know what I've never played this game before let me give it a shot right I, I did that for shadow on missions and I went oh oh my god this was so much fun I, it's completely different than the kind of role playing that I'm used to doing because it's it's one of those games where you're the bad guy so all the GM has to do is say this is your opportunity to do whatever you want and then I'll react to whatever you decide to do okay. like, as opposed to the to the much more cinematic style, like like Seven C, in which you're, you know, the bad guys doing all the stuff behind the scenes, and you just react to what they do. Right. So, w- which one is which is your favorite system? Uh, you know, I like them both, and uh, I mean, in terms of mechanics or in terms of just the the storyline. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Great question. Well, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and diss my very favorite game in the whole world, and I apologize for this, all of you who are listening and, and love Shadowrun, but or Seven C. Seven C has very wonky mechanics, um, especially if you get past, say, a year's worth of adventuring. Your character is going to be so unbelievably powerful that they're no longer playable. Mm. Uh, Shadowrun has that, but its its learning curve is a little slower. It's just like me in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Only when your battery's it. at 2%. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to go there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just very slowly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just for you guys uh, listening to the podcast, uh, uh, Adrian was telling a story earlier uh, how he was coming home. He was having a rough day, and his uh, his wheelchair battery had run down to 2%, and he was just kind of do 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 <laughs> He's like, like an old lady. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. I think I can. I think I, I think can. I can. Damn, you beat me to it. <laughs> you know, you know, I could have taken the, like a third shower of the day. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, hey. Or no three showers. All right, so, so we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a quick. I came up with a game, real quick that we can play in interview in situ. <laughs> that I'm springing I'm game master. No, I'm springing this one on you, brother. I'm game master. All right, so for the next five minutes, uh, Mike and Brian. Mike, you can only talk like Stewie, and Brian, you can only talk like Bill Cosby. And go. Oh, um, all right. So, all right. So, Mark. So then you work. So you work for Catalyst Games. Um, and uh, you you had a kind of a was the, was that the company you had a bad split with? Yeah. Yeah. Well, me and uh, every single one of their freelancers at the time. Right. And, and you know, um, you were talking before about um, how you you didn't you know you wouldn't. It's a little controversial and stuff, but I do want to go into this just a little bit because I think this is important for sure. for freelancers in the gaming industry because we know a lot of freelancers in the gaming industry. I mean, you and I have a bunch of friends you know that that do a lot of freelance work, um, and you know it's important to to note that. That some of these gaming companies, and I'm sure it, it is not limited to gaming companies, but we know gaming companies, so that's what I'm going to talk about. Sure. Uh, you got to be careful because they, for freelancers, they get screwed over a lot, a lot, quite often. Well, it's, 
as, as far as, at least it's my impression, that as far as the, the gaming companies that I've experienced, it's, it's the rare exceptions who don't follow this rule, and that is we, we all grew up playing these games, and we said to ourselves when we were young, gosh, I would love to be part of this. And we got geekier and geekier about it. And then a few of us went, oh, hey, you know, here, here are the people who are actually doing the games. Let me see if I can write for them. Right. And, and most of them don't. I mean, it, or they, they ask about it and then they don't get involved or whatever. Right. Um, but for those of us who do, you know, let's, let's say one out of every 20,000 is actually willing to put forth some effort and write a, an adventure or something. Right. They've got a never-ending pool of free newbies who are willing to work for peanuts. I say, Mark, um, I have a question. Um, <laughs> do you do you remember the uh, the first um, the first game that you actually um, submitted for uh, the uh, company? I don't, I don't know. But uh, where would that be? I don't know. But uh, this company, what, what, you know, what kind of feedback did you get? Was it positive or was it? Uh, um, well, it was, uh, it, was <laughs> it was actually the, the first adventure that I wrote for the Shadowrun missions, um, or the, the first adventure that I submitted for them. It was not accepted. Um, the name of the adventure was Miracles on Gertie Horse Street. Oh, um, that's quite clever. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> basically, um... basically the, the plot was um, a whole bunch of people saw what they assumed to be... Uh, the ghost of Christmas past coming out of a uh, soy burrito company in the middle of the of the slums, and so everybody was going there to see the picture of baby Jesus on a burrito. <laughs> I like burritos. I can't I, imagine why they wouldn't have accepted that. But then, but, uh, after you've um, annihilated those who deny that, and in the second submission, I, I uh, imagine, uh, went better? Yes, yes, it did. Uh, actually, they, what a, uh, uh, the gentleman who, uh, who uh, kind of brought me into running missions, um, who was earlier we were discussing companies that, uh, that break the rule and are, are decent companies to work for, he now runs the company that I, that I had the best relationship with. Um, so I kind of want to give him a little shout out because he's a company I would, for new people, I would say, go get, go find these guys and write for them because they'll they'll do right by you. Right. Um, I, I do say I was wondering, uh, what would be better than a burrito? Would it have been like a um, uh, a pudding pop? What do you say there, <laughs> Brian? Hmm? Now you see, I love some good old fashioned jello pudding pop. <laughs> you know, you're, you're you're judging crawling with your friends, with the gods and the sorcery. Oh, but you know what I'm talking about. You go there on the grand epic quest to slay the ghost of pudding pop. I would not <laughs> play the shit out of that. <laughs> would you have eaten um, the pudding pop that had uh, Jesus on it? Would you have done that, mm, Brian? Could you have eaten Jesus off of a pudding pop? Now that's a tough question, you see. <laughs> now... <laughs> so, 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 you're, so you're saying that baby Jesus is on the pudding pop. It's a picture. It's not baby Jesus. It's just his face. I, I'm saying it's chocolate and uh, Jesus' baby... Face is on the pudding pop. Yes. yes oh, right. hell no. I get the vanilla pudding pop every day. <laughs> so you're saying that you think Jesus was white or? No, I, I, no, no you, you don't put words in my mouth. I, like, <laughs> I just like vanilla pudding pop. <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys are freed from your... <laughs> And break. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the real yeah. interview here. All right, so so Mark, what, <laughs> what, what what did you do next? So you moved on from Catalyst Games and into what? Uh, into um, I actually followed a couple of my uh, my friends who uh, worked for Margaret Weiss. Oh, okay. Uh, got to meet her a bunch of times. Yeah, it was it was great fun, and that was where I uh, where I first learned that uh, that our gods are are approachable. I don't. I don't mean real gods. I mean the gods of us gamers. <laughs> right, right, gamer. I got that. I follow. I was following you. So, <laughs> so, no, Margaret Weiss. Yeah, she's a big deal. As a matter of fact, um, 
She, they just, I think my uh, my understanding is they just released the Serenity game. We um, released it. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, Margaret Weiss's Plus. version of it, or did they do it before? Well, they they put one early. They put out two games, and then um, what's it? Who who holds the rights? Is it Universal or is it Fox? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. And, anyway, whoever rolled, whoever holds the rights said. Well, you're putting out two books, so uh, we're going to rescind the license. You can't put out anything more. But, so, but I think um, I was uh, I follow. Um, oh, I can't that remember. That was that was the first time. I, they, oh, there could be certainly yeah. a second time. Right, right, okay, yeah, because I think they just re-released it. So that might be it. It might have been the the rights might have been pulled, and they gave them back to, or they gave them to Margaret Weiss. Now, did she release the one before? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so maybe she got them back again. Okay, I don't know. I, oh. I'll, I'm trying to get Monica on here to talk about it. Monica worked on it. Um, can't think of to- her last name on the top of my head right this minute, but um, she was talking about she's very happy that, you know, she's like all proud that it's coming out, which is cool. Um, all right, so what did you work on, uh, uh, Margaret Weiss? Uh, mostly I, again, wrote adventures. Uh, I wrote a couple of adventures for the for the original Firefly. Okay. Uh, and then I wrote a couple of adventures for the, the uh, Supernatural game that they had. Okay. That's cool. Um, all right, I so left just before they put out the uh, the leverage game. Lever- I never heard of that. Uh, leverage? Yeah. Oh, great show. Oh, okay. Okay. Shadow Run. Well, more more cyberpunk. Basically, a, a group of thieves who go out and do good deeds. Ah, okay. So a bunch of Han Solos running around, eh? Mm-hmm. They're they're all they're all bad guys, but their leader is the good guy. He's the one that keeps them from stealing too much. Okay. <laughs> They're bad, but the other guys are worse. Yes. Okay. Yes. I gotcha. All right. So, um, so is there any other RPG stuff you want to talk about before we dive into 14 degrees north of prophecy? Um, yeah, it's it's what I would say if you're asking about the the freelance thing is you kind of got to find you got to get your feet wet, and people aren't going to know your name if you're not writing stuff. And so, yes, it sucks to find, you know, you're going to find a 12,000-word adventure, and you're going to get $50 in company credit. Oh. That's about the best you can expect. But you, you do it because then your name is out there. Right, right. Yeah, I do. I advise people to uh, to write for other people's stuff if they want to get started. So that's, you sure. know. Yeah. Uh, but, what else but, have you, you know, learned? <laughs> what else have you learned about self-publishing, as far as the good, the bad, and the ugly? Uh, um, I mean, other, other. And before you answer that, other people have said have mentioned things like, and it sounds like you're alluding to this too. Is it's not uh, what you know; it is some of it is who you know, and it's not that you just have to magically know them. But sometimes just getting your name out there is important. But what else do you have to add to that? Um. Yeah, that's. It really is uh, find some good people to back you up. Um, I'm I'm a good writer. I'm a terrible editor. Um, I'm also I don't know if I'm a great um, promotion person. I don't, I don't know if I get my name out there enough. I just I want to write stories and entertain people. So um um since you like promotions and stuff, do you need a website? Oh, oh God! God. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Every episode. <laughs> I know it was coming. The next time he he chimes in, and I know it's coming. I'm just gonna blurt it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's like <laughs> no. Right, so so Mark, uh, promotion wise, all right, so like coming on shows like this is a good way to, to help promote your book. Um, and of course, Absolutely. we'll continue to promote you. So if you have any other, you know, if, if it comes down the line, if you have anything else you want else anything else you want us to talk about, we'll try and squeeze it into the show at, at you know, during during one of our shows later on. So like if you got a big announcement to make, you know, three months from now, just let us know and we'll say, hey, oh by the way, you know. Um, well, I am I am writing my second book right now. Okay. I actually got done with my today's writing just before we started. Oh sorry, so let, let let's segue into that. Um okay. so you did this little thing called NaNoWriMo, and I, I know what that is, um, but how about you tell us, tell everybody, what exactly is NaNoWriMo? How'd you find out about it, um, and how'd you get involved in it? Uh, two of the people from my regular gaming group do NaNoWriMo every year. And, oh, let's back up. NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writer's Spot. Oh, um, I thought it was little tiny 
little nano things that rhyme or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, when they first said it, I was like, okay, I don't know what it is. It must be Pokemon. Yeah, you know, exactly. You're That's 20 year old. Right. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. So, my son loves My Little Pony. Maybe it's one of those things. I don't know. Da, na, 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 na. Right. So, um, but they every November they do a. Uh, um, just a challenge, and the idea is that if the idea that started it was the world is a better place if there are more books in it, and so you must have a book in you. Let us help you start it, um, and, and that really is the most difficult part. Is uh, even amongst the entertaining stories, I'm writing a meaningful one, um, and the problem is I've been working on it for three years, and. I think I have twenty thousand words on it. I just can't. I can't do it because it, in my mind, it needs to be perfect because it's one of those meaningful pieces. Right. So instead of writing other books, I just kind of ground my wheels with this thing. Well, these two friends of mine who in my game group said, you, know, "You really should try this. Do, don't do don't do the big book, but do something just to, that would be fun." Well, this. Uh, the, the 14 degrees north of prophecy started as a campaign that I that I wrote for for these for the very same players, and they got about I would say six months into it, and then it went no place. But it was probably the best thing that I had written at the time. And I said, you know, this this really is just dying to be made into a book, and so that's how I got started. And I they said 50,000 words, and I thought, well, that's that's a lot in a month. Right. Um, that's you know, one thousand six hundred and sixty-seven per day. But uh, within about a week, when I had hit the the minimum number, I hit the minimum number the first day, and then doubled it the second day, and stayed at about double, pretty much all the way through. You found um, your stride. Although, it, yeah, you found your stride. By the by, the last like eight or nine days, I was hitting four thousand words a day. And, and my record currently sits at about just shy of 8,000 words in a day. Holy shit! Really? Eight? Th- <laughs> that's a God damn. That is a lot. That is a lot of content. I mean, that that is. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it, it, for any of you people out there who don't write, because I've I've written a couple of short stories. That is impressive. That if if I had hey, a doubt, Darth well, Vader sound effect right now would be impressive. But <laughs> I can talk 8,000 words. So uh, so so. So we got we got a challenge from uh, some of the people on our chat right now. Okay. For Brian and and uh, Mike. Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm nerds. See if they can do different voices throughout the show. It's <laughs> <laughs> too vague. Tell them whoever that is that they can pick one. <laughs> All right. So. I'm going. Besides which, I was getting ready to hit Pete with a challenge. Uh oh! Oh shit! Okay. Hi, sir. Oh you god. You gotta do five minutes of this. Okay. All right. So, Mark, <laughs> was it but, Mr. Hanky? <laughs> no, it, it's it's the uh, Herbert, Herbert the Perfect, right? Family yeah. Guy. Okay. Oh, okay. So, Mark, <laughs> yes. was yeah, it? You gotta be serious, though. This is serious. You right, ask I... your serious questions, okay. Herbert. I, I'm trying to. <laughs> so, Mark. How hard was it to get those many words in? I mean, you got little children running around, don't you? <laughs> oh, I'm totally freaked out by this. <laughs> uh, as as Mr. Herbert's lawyer, I'm just going to say that what he meant was that you have uh, children at home. Sure, certainly they must have been in, an imposition to you trying to get these 8,000 words. Uh, how did you balance that out? Well, uh, fortunately for me, the youngest just started kindergarten, so I have from... 9 a.m. in the morning till noon with no interruptions. Hmm. So, you do you work from home? I do. I do. Oh, that's nice. You know, <laughs> if it gets hot, you can take your shirt off. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Too, too cold cold better at home. <laughs> yeah, you, you are a little old. So, um, <laughs> so, how many words did you get to? Um, well, I stopped a week early because uh, it was Thanksgiving, and, and I got to eight thousand seven hundred and some odd. Uh, 
Is that? 80,000. 80, 87,000. 80, How about that? Well, that's, that's almost a novel. It is. It is. <laughs> Although, you, you had said on the website that I got the book done in a month. I didn't actually get the book done in a month. I got the first 87,000 done in a month, and then it took the other month to write the other, what, 40,000. Well, you know, I like to exaggerate a little bit sometimes. <laughs> I might say something's a little bigger than it is every once in a while. <laughs> Can I please stop doing this? <laughs> yeah, next time, next time you throw me <laughs> right under the bus, you just remember that. You've always got that voice under your belt, buddy. All right, now, all right. So seriously, Mark. Now, I, all right, enough, enough. Let's let's get serious here. We're gonna get Mark's interview in. So, Mark, so you got all right. So you did a hundred and hundred and twenty some thousand words. Yes, and then it, it went to the editors, of course. Mm-hmm. And what did it did it get trimmed down any, or or did you were you able to keep most of your content? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, the the uh, the editor that I use doesn't do the kind of editing I thought she did because I didn't know there were multiple types of editing, but apparently <laughs> there are. Okay, That's another one of those. Uh, okay, I just write things and hand them to you and let someone else do them, but. What the kind of editing she does is making sure that the sentences, that the structure is, is good. Uh, she doesn't take content out, and she doesn't make um, plot changes. Although she mm-hmm. she did to this one, not realizing that she was doing it. Okay, so she she well, Mark, Mark in the big leagues, we like to call that grammar. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so basically, that's so, what uh, she, she did. She, she she was worried about sentence structure, uh, spelling, grammar, that kind of stuff. Yes. Right. Um, all right. So, I forgot where I was going to go with this. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, right, well, while, while you're thinking about yeah, it, keep ahead. thinking about that question. Then, so grammar checking, and then, so, were you able to find a different editor or a different person? And uh, the, my one question was because I'm not sure about this. Who did you go with? This did you go with like a private editor, or did, did yes. you at this point you had found a publisher, or you were still sort of shopping around? Well, from from the research that I did in terms of how you're going to sell your book, um, I could shop the book around to a uh, to a you know like Daw Books and those the, the actual physical book publishers, um, but the the way it was described to me or the, what I read was you can expect you know, someone who's an established name in writing can expect about ten percent of the cost of the book. Per sale, so if you if you sell a book for ten bucks, you can expect a dollar. Um, but that's established, and I'm not, so I could expect maybe a third of that. So, I third. wouldn't go waving fifty dollars in Pete's face then, if that's the. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm still in the hole as far as this uh, as far as this book goes. Um, one of my plans is to. Uh, to bring some books with me when I go to the various conventions that uh, the, the players that I that I run with and say I happen to have the actual physical book if you're interested. Now, do you have a publisher? I well, me. I'm, I'm the publisher. Okay, so you're self-publishing. Yes. Okay. Now, it, are you able to find places like I know? I'm I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I don't know a whole lot of authors like I know you and say I don't know. Scott Sigler. Uh, no, I know a few more than that, but like I know his model. A is to he gives this stuff away for free, you know, or part of it is a, a premium model, as well as he does tour, you know, around. And I know that can be expensive, but he'll find places like you know bookstores, uh, Barnes and Noble, right. and you know be able to do readings and sort of you know get his following. Is that is is that sort of the path you're on, or that's, where... that's virtually identical to what I'm doing. Uh, okay. That's, I haven't gotten to the to the actual bringing the books in because because um, I actually need to have the books with me. So I'm at this point I've made the order for the books. Now I just have to wait for them to come and then then make my my appointments with various bookstores in the area. And how many did you order in bulk? I, I just have... uh, I bought a hundred. Okay, all right. I don't, no, I don't I... know if I'll, I'll sell that many, but. Oh, I'm sure you will. Uh, yeah. Hold on. You'll sell 100. No, I was thinking because I know like there's like you'll you'll have pictures at some point in the future. You'll have pictures of you, you know, laying on like you know thousands of books. That'll that, <laughs> you know, you'll know you've made it then, right? Yes. Well, yes. well I'll tell you this. Um, I, I've read. I have 
Mark sent me a copy of it early on because uh, I'm going to be doing the I'm going to be reading the audio for him. So we're going to turn it into an audio book. Well, and that, is, that is if you like the book. I do. I, no, no, I do. As, as I say, it's, it could still suck. Well, it, it could. All right, so I'm three chapters in. So I, I've read the first. Actually, I lied. I'm two chapters and into the third chapter. I haven't read the third chapter yet. I'm, I'm into it. Um, and so far, I'm really intrigued. I mean, we, we got it, – it's 1930, right? Uh, you've got uh, four main characters. And I'm, I'm guessing the, the – the, what is he? The help? The what, what is the term I'm looking for? The servant. The servant. He's, servant. he's, he's servant. Yeah, he, I'm sure he's going to stick around and be a character, right? I mean, he's going to probably stick around right. for a bit? Yes. Okay. Yes. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Well, I'm, it's, it's pretty evident that he is a character in the book. I'm just seeing if I'm getting this right because I'm only so far in. Yes. Uh, and so far, it's really intriguing. I mean, you know, they're, they're, it starts out with a really nefarious kind of scene. Uh, that's the first chapter. And then they go into this, the second chapter I'm in. You know, you're getting introduced to the characters and they're, they're meeting up. Um, and, uh, I don't know. It sounds interesting. It, it, it really is. It's, uh, so is there anything you want to talk about in this book? Cause I don't, like I said, I don't want to give away anything that I've read that you, that I shouldn't be giving away yet. Not that, I, not that there could be much in the first couple chapters, I would hope, but, uh, but, but why don't you give us a synopsis of, of what the book is about? Oh, well, flip the book over. <laughs> Actually, I have the first edition. I don't have the, the one on there, but, uh, but yeah, basically the, the, the gist of the, uh, the book is that these four, these four friends, who are the only surviving friends of of, of six, uh, have dealt with some issue that was that that ended with the death of two of their friends. Actually, the death of one of them, and the uh, you know, the, the survivor went irrevocably mad and has been in a, a mental institution since the event. Okay. Well, once a year, just about the time that 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 event happened, they all meet together at this very exclusive posh club, the 14 Degrees North Club, um, which is one of those uh, throwbacks to the old, uh, the, like the Explorers Club. Right. All of the, actually, this, that was a funny tangential story. Um, the idea for the club came to me when I went to a science museum in uh, downtown Boston, the uh, Boston Science Museum. Down in the basement, they have one of those old hunting lodge um, rooms. Okay. You know, the, with the with the elephant's foot. That's the the umbrella stand and all of the, uh, the old dark wood and and uh, animal heads. You know, exotic animal heads up on the wall and shotguns and that kind of stuff. Right. I saw this room and I went, "This room needs to find some way into my into my world because this is awesome." Right. So um, anyway, so the, these friends meet at this very posh club, and they have a drink in remembrance of, of their two friends. And then something happens that's unlike the other decade worth of uh, time that they that they come to the to this particular celebration, I guess if you call it. Right. So that, that's as far as I'll go because the, the rest would be totally spoilery. And then but, nefariousness ensues. Yes, yes. So, so does this go into, is this sort of, um, uh, just, just to get a feel for this, uh, to see, you know, like if other people like this kind of story, will they, li- will, will they like your story? Is this sort of an Indiana Jones-ish? Uh, are we looking more of like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen-ish? I'm not trying to pigeonhole your story. I'm just trying to get yeah. a general feel. Genre. A genre, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Would, I would go... I would say a little bit more League of Extraordinary Gentlemen than than Indiana Jones. Okay. Um, while it certainly has all the same tropes, um, I wrote it in the. If you're looking for a genre, cliffhangers is the is this genre. Oh, okay, good. I don't I don't know if you noticed this, Peter, but every, every chapter ends with a oh my gosh, what happened? Yeah, what yeah, happens yeah. Next. Yep. I did notice that. So, Oh, were there any any characters in your book? Do they have like superpowers or extra <laughs> sep kind of powers, or is it all just regular humans? I'm not telling. Ah, yeah. see oh, what you did there. <laughs> That's not a no. <laughs> well, the other thing you can do if you're if you don't have the book or you're you're not you're not sure whether you're interested is on my website. I have four short stories that kind of 
explain who the individual characters are and a little bit about their personality. And they're also written in the same kind of cliffhangers genre. And the fun part is that each of the, the individual stories on the website, they end in a cliffhanger. Ah. And the answer to how they survived is in the book. Oh, cool. Okay. So just so if you're watching this video right now and you look here, hold on a minute. Let me put it on me. Let me do this. If you look right down here, you'll find a link to Mark's page um, and, and go there. And these stories are free, right? They can download them and read them for free. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 They're, I PDF them so they can print them off or do whatever they want with them. And uh, I'm hoping if this is, say, four or five months later, uh, there'll be an audio book that you can get to. And <laughs> yes. ha have you thought about how you want to put that out so people can consume that? Yes, Mark and I have decided that you are going to read that as Herbert the Pervert. Oh, I mean, hands down. Oh, that's, right. that's a done deal. I mean, come on. 14 degrees north. <laughs> no, seriously. Have you, have you, have, do you have any idea how you want to do that? Like, um, would, would that be something maybe you'd want a podcast or? Um... You know, I have no idea. This is another one of those went past my ability to understand things, and it's all a matter of who do I know. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I got an idea. What's that? Uh, possibly. Uh, I'm thinking, like, in terms of, you know, again, like, who do you know? But what if uh, you approached people at, say, the good people at Gygax Magazine, and if you gave them plugs for their magazine, maybe they would put – you know, you're in in return, and you would say, "I'll I'll serial serialize this," and every you know, uh, in thirty episodes or in twenty or whatever, how many episodes it takes, and then uh, you know, I'll give you, I'll I'll say that this this episode is brought to you by Gagax Magazine, da 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 da, and then in return, maybe they give you a page for two months or something, or you know, a half a quarter page or something. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, if you could find, you know, what would be kind of cool is if you could find some uh, some cross promotion sponsorship like that, then you could. It would behoove you. You could then podcast a thing. You could podcast it for free, right? And then that way, uh, you're getting free exposure for people to buy your book. Uh, and I know it sounds kind of weird to podcast something for free that you're selling, um, but there are plenty of podcasters that do that that have books, and it's a totally viable model. I would definitely look oh, into yeah. that if I were you. It it, it works. It works for. Um, so it works for Scott Sigler. It works for uh, Paul Cooley, who we had on here. Um, and because everybody, it seems people, like everybody. A lot of people get in the middle of the book when things just start getting juicy, and they're like, "Oh, I don't want to wait for next week." And then there's an impulse buy, and they'll go and buy the book. I've done it. Well, I've, it's yep, yep. Well, the 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 folks that I started working with at uh, a Catalyst left Catalyst at the same time I did, and started doing the uh, what's that? Uh, the transhumanist one, um, the transhuman horror. I can't remember the name of the, the thing, but I can see it. Um, well, the, they they did that same model where they said we have a basic book for for our adventures, and we're we are going to seed it to all of the like the pirate bay and all those stuff, so you can get it for free. Mm -hmm. Here it is; it's right out there. If you want it, you can come by and, and pay us for the for the PDF for it. But we would we would rather have you be part of the community rather than part of the the underground community. I think I understand. Yeah. Are you talking about Eclipse Phase? Yeah, Eclipse Phase. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I remember because he and I. Um, oh man, what was his name? Um, 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 I know his name. Uh, uh, Peter Bryant. He was after after those guys. Um, I can I can see. I can see him right now because he yeah. has that green mohawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so I was talking to him about it, and I totally agree with him. I was just kind of like, you know, because we were talking about, we got on to talking about pirating, and like, what do you do about, you know, what do you do about pirating other than sink their ship? But <laughs> what do you do about, you know, like internet pirates? And and he was like, um, he said, oh well, we torrent our stuff. We put it up. We put a good copy up ourselves so that people would get a good copy. And you know, and I was like, I was like, I love that idea. That that is awesome. Yeah. Because I was just, yeah, you know, I, it's kind of like people who are going to pirate stuff weren't going to buy it anyway. You're right, exactly, and and that's and that's his thinking is is people who might might pirate it might then read it and go, you know what, this was great. I'm willing to pay him five bucks for it, and that, right. that's five bucks that they weren't going to get before. And there's a new site 
uh, revenue model you might want to look into as well. You can still do ad revenue um, and cross promotional revenue, but there's a, a site called Patreon, and uh, a lot of podcasters are getting into it. And it's basically saying, hey, you know, it, uh, it's uh, user supported basically. Like, hey, if you like what we do, send me five cents. You know, it, it kind of works on that small scale individual, you know, internet scalability thing. So it's like, hey, you want to give me a dollar? You know, 500 people giving me one dollar is still 500 dollars. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Um. Uh. Who Who was doing that? I say Brian Brushwood does that, right? Uh. So yep, he's doing yep. that. Uh. Ben Gerber is doing that. Uh. You oh, know yeah. Ben, right? Okay. Yeah. He's He's yep. doing Patreon. Um. And I I've, I've been meaning to get back with him because when we had him on the show, he had just started it. So I've been meaning to get back with him and ask him how's that working out for you? Because he also did a a thing. Uh. Pay what you Pay what you want for his yep. role playing stuff. And um, and he had good success with that early on, but he's you know he said his numbers kind of went up and down, and he's he's trying to figure out whether that's a good model yet or not. You know, because sometimes artists will underprice themselves. It's like somebody would give you more if it costs more. Yeah, yeah. If you say give what you want, you never know who's gonna be like, hey, I like this. I'll give you, you know, whatever they it's, got. It's the uh, the in real life, I'm a psychologist. And the, uh, yeah, yeah, I've been analyzing all of you. <laughs> oh, good. Um, hey, I work with psychologists all the time. You don't <laughs> scare me. <laughs> you don't scare me, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Just freaking out. <laughs> yeah, because I work with all of your uh, your victims there. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh that's <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. Hey, we, we do not condone that on this show. We, just no, have Her- no. we, we think Herbert's funny, though. And it's, anyway, it's, it's one good. of the voices I can do. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> got a very small wheelhouse. Well, I'm working. I, I used to do more, but I, I've let them slide, so I got to work on them. Brian's our voice guy. <laughs> He's supposed to be so doing the, more. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the, the 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 thing you were talking about in terms of uh, of getting people to pay mm-hmm. is uh, what we find in psychology is. The more people pay, the more they value what they have. Uh, so yes. you give therapy away for free, they don't value the therapy that they get. <laughs> but right. you charge them an arm and a leg. It's like the best therapist, therapist ever. Cost me a fortune. Yeah. <laughs> you know why he caught you know why he's good? Because he has to be. <laughs> I paid all this money. <laughs> and my iPhone has to be good. I paid a lot of money for it. Right, right. It's better than your phone. I paid more. <laughs> All right. All right, Mark, we could talk about anything else you want to talk about. Uh, is there anything uh, I – while we have – we still have a little bit of time left, but uh, this could also be our time to geek out on anything too. I always – you know, we had a little success last week talking about what we're watching on TV uh, or what, you know, what, we're, what shows we're catching up on or what games we're playing. Is there anything that uh, kind of catches your fancy, tickles oh. your – well, the one that I'm sure that everybody is watching, uh, we tape Cosmos every Sunday night to watch with our children tonight. Okay. Uh, this it comes on too late, and my children just love this show. They love it as much as I loved Carl Sagan's Cosmos when it originally came on. Right. I just The show is just amazing. So... Let me ask you, because uh, you know what the hell? It's just 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 a show we're doing, and you know while I have you on the on the line, <laughs> if you can't catch it, or if you didn't get a chance to tape the last episode, like I don't know, let's just say he couldn't do it. Like, uh, where could he find it that it's rebroadcast or re on demanded or re broad, you know, able to be seen? Is there a place that it's Cosmos? free to, to catch again? Do you know offhand? Well, I know I know that our uh, our uh, on demand DVR will. Has it in? But they're, every channel that Fox owns is re-showing it pretty much everywhere. The good people at Dish Network uh, found it necessary to uh, not repair last time my my dish right, so something got corroded and I lost the signal for last week, and I uh, didn't get the chance to see it until today when they they finally came on and uh, fixed it again. They came by today at the house. So I am like freaking out and I don't know where I can go to like, you know, re get it. Yeah. So I, anybody knows I've please. I've lost my uh nerd card on this because I haven't <clears throat> I haven't watched it. I, I want to. I'm not it's not that I I haven't chosen so much not to watch. I'm just super ultra busy and I've been yeah. watching 
you know, I was so heavily invested in Walking Dead, and it kind of uh, came on at the same time, and I'm kind of like, Arr! so I wanted to catch it from the beginning, but I figured it's going to be on Hulu or or you know on demand, like you said, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so Netflix I need to find it soon before it goes away. But they'll probably keep that on for a while. I mean, oh, yeah. from, from what I've heard, this thing is is awesome. It's one oh. of those things where, like, you know, for the guests that we have on the show and, and, you know, it's, like, almost important. Like, maybe we need to be caught up on this so that, you know, I don't want to be caught with my pants down. <laughs> uh, Do you? Well, well I, maybe. I, I figured everybody was going to talk about The Walking Dead and the fact that they totally telegraphed the uh, the whole ending for, yeah, the, uh, they did. for the last season. But because, I mean, who among us went? Oh, Terminus is a great place. It's going to be wonderful. Everything's going to be resolved. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Shangri-La. Right. <laughs> you should just go back to jail. Right. So, <laughs> Brian, are you watching Cosmos? Um, I actually have it on my DVR. I haven't been able to catch up on it. So I have them saved on my DVR. I was actually going to watch them after the show. <laughs> oh, so, so, Mike, you could fly down to Dallas. Right. I was just, I was just having a little jump down to Dallas. <laughs> Hang out with Brian. You could, you, two, you guys could watch together, do a little bonding. Oh. What do you say, Brian? Hmm? Do a little uh, pajama jamma jam. <laughs> <laughs> I totally do it. You never had Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, you're the best. <laughs> um, so, All right. So wait a minute, uh, r- real quick. So we're gonna, we're gonna do, and in just a little bit, we're gonna do our movie draft thing. Um, what movies are you looking forward to this summer, Mark? Ooh, um, I, uh, when I went to see uh, Captain America, because you know, I'm a giant Captain America fan, um, they had a commercial for Lola. Is it Lola? Lolita? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Lucy. 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 Lucy, that was it. Man, that looked good. That looked really good. You know what? It, it does, but the it, problem is, is it... It hit me right in one of my sore spots because they, they, it has that 10% of the brain premise. And, yeah, and it, I, it, and it, it hurts the shit out of me, but I'm going to let that slide. It reminds me of Limitless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's Limitless cranked up a little bit with Scarlett Johansson. That's why I'm just like, mm-mm. Well, no, no. Not like, having it. It's like, it's like one of these things where it's like I'm fine with, you know, Thor, you know, flying around with a hammer, you know, and, and I'm okay with a guy – uh, somehow he increases his mass and strength. You know the Hulk. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm fine with a guy who flies around in in super armor with um, you know, completely defying the law of physics because the mm-hmm. the he doesn't have enough propellant to to fly like that. That all that shit I'm good with, right? But this ten percent of the brain don't, thing. Don't forget the landing. Right, right, right. But the ten percent of the brain thing. That irks the shit out of me, and I don't. I, I honestly, I, I swear, I just don't know why. I don't know why well, that. I don't know why? Because it's such a, it's, it's such a, it's, it's in the meme uses. of America. It's like a stupid misnomered meme. Oh, I think yeah. You know what it is. You know what I think it is. I got it. You're right, Mike. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's because, no one in America really believes that Iron Man's suit could really work. You know, no one believes that the Hulk. Could really be real, at least I hope not. I mean, I don't. We just read some something online about. Although I do have to say, my my wife was willing to blow Iron Man for a ride in a suit. Oh, Whoa. okay. Well, well, hello there. Well, so was I. So. Who isn't right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but the ten percent of the analyze that the ten percent <laughs> of the brain thing. I think that bugs me because a lot of people actually believe that. Like there are a lot of people that actually buy into that. And that just, a, yeah, it, there is a good chunk who do believe in that, and, and they've proved it time and again. No, we use much more than 10%. Use all of it. Use 100% of your brain, every piece of your brain you use. Maybe not all at one time, but you use all of it. For God's <laughs> sake, it still runs when you're asleep. It, oh, no, it really – dude, it really <laughs> runs when you're asleep. That's when you use everything. You more calories hey, when you're asleep. I'm, right? I'm always at 2%. Come on. Oh. <laughs> At your wheelchair, Adrian. <laughs> See, oh, the problem, I thought right? I was a robot. <laughs> and the problem for me as a psychologist is 
I know what happens if you use all of your brain capacity all at the same time. It's called a seizure. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that, that'll be the plot twist. Yeah. This is all a seizure dream she's right. having. Right. She's still well, in the cell. Here, here you go. Here's you using 100% of your brain. <laughs> That's about what it looks like. <laughs> It well, doesn't. It doesn't like cool ass kung fu. The reason I'm willing to let him slide is simply because Morgan Freeman said it. Oh, right. Well, that yeah, because he's God and everything, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, Morgan Freeman says so. He's he's he, got street cred. He played God twice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he well, owned uh, it. He owned it. <laughs> wait, but, wait a minute. What's his name? Uh, uh, George Burns. Oh, yeah, he played God like what nine times. Let me let me tell you something. You only use like eight percent of your brain. And there was oh, what was that movie? Uh, Fighting for Your Life, which was uh, an old oh god, it was Helen Hunt and I can't remember the guy with the curly hair. But apparently, when you die, uh, you go up to heaven and they judge your acts. And if you've been brave enough and and I don't know, you've done enough with your life, you get to pass on to the beyond, you know, to the to to the heaven itself. Uh, and the people there, the counselors there. Uh, the premise was is as they they're up there longer they they start eating like really gross food like it like looks like like paste but it's like oh well, you wouldn't you you were not gonna like this because you only use you know a certain percentage of your brain but the more percentage of your brain you use the more you you'll appreciate this and I was just like what <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right so that was a dumb movie and a dumb reference um, <laughs> so I I just made, uh, one more stupid reference or stupidity on the internet is uh, I I can't remember where it was you know how like you see something in your feed and you're like oh I'm gonna save that and all of a sudden Facebook sees fit to just go yeah no it's gone now yeah so it was something about Captain Janeway uh, did you anyone catch this yes she, uh, yeah she's promoting some fucking movie that's like she narrated some show or something where it, it was promoting beliefs about the Earth revolving around this the I mean I'm sorry the sun revolving around the Earth. It, it's one of these – it's a movie that, that falls in the line with what the bleep do we know. Right. It's, it's one of those, like, everything we know about science is wrong. It's like – Captain no. Janeway, are you kidding me? That's all I have to wait, say about that. Wait, so the Earth is flat? <laughs> no, idiot. The sun goes around the Earth. <laughs> oh, I thought we lived in the Earth. Oh, wait. Yeah. I thought we lived in the sun. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Captain All right, so Jane give me Wayne. a few seconds. I'm going to invite right. our right. guest in, okay? While you do that, while you do that, everybody, go to www.daddywritesgood.com, and that's where you will find uh, Mark's book and all the information on it. Get the free stories. Um, read those stories. Get hooked on his stuff. Buy his book. It's it's Please. so far so far from what I've read, it's really good. Um, what was the link again? Daddy writes good. W R it's D A D D Y W R I T E S G O O D dot com. Um, it, it better take me to one of those nice websites, maybe. <laughs> no, that's it's, that's not that's, that kind of website. No, no, uh, that's Daddy. Uh, that's Daddy. I do put links on there for you. That's, <sighs> Adrian, that's Daddy spanks good. Uh, <laughs> the oh, other, oh, I, there's also Daddy I've been writes going to the good. Website. All right. So anyway, listen. So uh, <laughs> Mark has another stop. Mark has another website. It's uh, Guild of San Marcos. So it's uh, G U I L D O F S A N M A R C O S dot net. Um, check that out. That is what is that exactly again, Mark? Yeah. That that's the I, I run a living campaign oh, at yes, all right. the big conventions and uh, using Seven C of course. Um, and it's a it's a twelve year a twelve year twenty four adventure story arc that has. I've written all the uh, all of the campaign, all of the adventures, at least the the outlines for them, before I started writing the first. So much like Babylon Five, the story is already written. It's just waiting for you to discover it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, check out Mark's stuff. It's awesome. Uh, and if you're at, oh, and if you're at a New England con, uh, what cons do you do? Uh, let's see. Around here, I do uh, Total Confusion, of course. Right. Um, I do. Uh, OGC, uh, Open Gaming Convention up in Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, then I do uh, Origins and Gen Con. And one of my fellow GMs, if you're if you're interested in, in the Living Campaign, does uh, Con on the Cob out in uh, Ohio. I see what you did there. 
con <laughs> on the cob. That's kind of cool. So uh, I, I thought it was kind of corny myself. But... Oh, oh nice I just one. got cornholed. Oh. <laughs> All right, so so yeah, so if you're in it at any of those cons, if you can make it to any of those cons, you should definitely go. Like, like I don't know, like maybe Gen Con, and uh, get in on Mark's games. He's an excellent, excellent, excellent game master. Make um, sure you charge your wheelchair. But yes, yes, make sure you charge your wheelchair. But yeah, definitely, uh, you want to get in. You want to get in on Mark's games. He runs a really excellent game. He's a really, really good deer. Yeah, you trust him to run to uh, run a three campaign multi. Faceted, uh, yeah. dim- interdimensional and uh, he did campaign, a, don't you? And he did a good job. He did an excellent job. I only killed the entire party once. Yeah. I like that thing you did with the car. So he, all right, just real quick. So we did this multi thing, and it was a time shifting time thing. And to simulate uh, a, a paradox, a time paradox, he had all the characters. Um, he took the, the, the person to his rights character sheet and, and made them shift their character sheet one over. And gave the person to his left a new character sheet, so that they'd all be playing different characters than they were playing before, because everybody plays a character differently. And that was to simulate the paradox of them all changing in some way. That was that was really clever. And then I removed one of the characters and changed their gender and uh, style. Yep. Yeah, that was that was actually that was, that was quite creative. You've just enjoyed the Mythwits. Join us for a live broadcast next week and every week. Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes and the podcast version at our website and on iTunes. Make sure to check out our website at mythwits.com and, of course, visit us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and iTunes. Mythwits is a Studio187.com production and is protected under an attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, Creative Commons work. You can download and share it with whoever you like, Just don't change it and don't try to make money with it. Make sure to check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff. See you next week.